another special episode of the Engaging Marketeer. I'm sharing a, a an interview I did with one of our team about AI content and the dangers of AI content within your your business and your your digital marketing. Uh, this interview with our, our content team leader, John Murray, was filmed for EngageWeb.club uh, about a month ago. So it's been in EngageWeb.club for a while, and EngageWeb.club members have had access to the, the full recording of this. But I wanted to share this on the podcast because I think it is really important for, for people, for you as a business owner, as a marketer, as a social media professional, whatever it is that you want to do with your, your marketing. It's important for you to, to hear what John's got to say about AI content and how it can be used effectively and well within marketing and within content for your website, but also the absolute dangers of AI content and where it can go and where both myself and John expect it to go, which can be very bad in the future. So here's the interview in full. Um, it was a cracking interview, some really great insights from John, and I, I hope you enjoy it. So what, what I thought we could do is a lot of people talking about using ChatGPT mm. to create their content for their website. And I've seen a lot of people who are literally just using it to ask it to generate blogs for them, and they're pasting that straight onto the website. Now, you're a bit of a content writer, I think it would be fair to say. Uh, I'd, I'd like to think I'd, I've done a fair bit of it, yeah. Yeah. Um, how, how many pieces of content have you edited at Engagement? I think uh, we talked about this the other day, wasn't it? Wasn't it? It was into was it into tens of thousands. Which oh, definitely into tens of thousands. Yeah, I think it was was it 80,000? 80, 80, something around eighty odd. Yeah, that's eighty odd thousand yeah. pieces of content you've edited personally. I, I, I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It, it's. You know, over several years. Not over, over, yeah. <laughs> not in the last week. Yeah. No, yeah. no. So you've some experience with writing content. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. And you're, you're a bit of a wordsmith yourself as well. I like, um, yeah, I like, I, I play a lot of nerdy games like Scrabble, Wordle, that sort of thing. So, hmm. yes, I like words and definitions. And I've got a lot of dictionaries. That you, kind of you have a collection of dictionaries? A collection of dictionaries of different languages, yeah. I've got kind of my own... Um, Sort of analog Google Translate at home. Wow. <laughs> okay. So it's fair to say you know quite a bit about content then. I think, I'd, yeah, I'd like yeah. to think so. Okay. Like think so. And, and you've been looking quite extensively recently at ChatGPT. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's sort of fascinating, frightening, and frustrating all at the same time. I, I can't, I can't, sort of, I find it very tempting to just play around with it and see what it can do. Um, at the same time, I find it quite sort of worrying how easy it is for just lazy people and sort of people with malicious intent to use, and also just a bit, just sort of. I'm not. I, I worry about where it might lead to eventually, mm. like what it what it might what how it might evolve and what what might eventually be done with it. But yeah, I'm, I'm using it a lot at the moment, just out of general interest, really. And, and what 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 sort of malicious intent were you? you think was well. I, at the moment, it's too. It, at the moment, it's quite gimmicky. I think it's just kind of like it's just there to. You can put a prompt in, get something back, um, and it's it's sort of more. It's the worst it's being used for at the moment is just to cut corners. I think just for people to to get like sort of filler content made, or for people to apply for jobs, or something like that with something a computer's written for them, or for somebody to. Um, you, know, you hear about kids doing their homework with it, that kind of thing. So mm. at the moment, it's a bit just sort of sneaky, sort of Roger the Dodger type stuff out of the Beano. <laughs> if you, do you, did you ever read Roger the Dodger in the Beano? Uh, I'm, I'm not the, a big Beano. I read Transformers. It? It's the sort of thing he'd do where the class, if he was around now, or I don't know if he's still in the Beano, but his teacher would have said, do this assignment, and he'd have gone, this is Dodge number 342. Let's use Chat GPT, Chat GPT to do it. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's a bit like that at the moment. But I... Long term, I do think like, what if, I don't know, what if someone, not so much chat GPT maybe, but AI in general, what if people sort of, you know, Im try and impersonate people or try and, you know, f what if they create videos of or sort of testimonies of people saying, I did this or I mm. did that or, you know, a video of somebody's, I know they get deep fakes and that already, but, yeah. the, but how, where that could go and what it could end up with people being accused of or what it could end up with guilty people 
getting off with because they might say, well, it wasn't me. It was it was a uh, it, it was, was AI. Yeah. yeah, that's what that's what worries me about it. You know, what's the that's the not so much the whole self awareness thing and all that sort of sci fi people kind of go on about. Which so you're not you know, worried about Skynet and the Terminator. I don't. Or I don't have the. I don't have the. That's not my area of of knowledge, really. Mm. Um, that's more kind of probably something for you to to think about. Um, I'm more worried about kind of just sort of authenticity and sort of truth through it. Mm. So um, you, you you don't really know who wrote something, who originated yeah, it. It exactly. could have been AI. It could have been somebody could else. Could have been. How are we going to tell the difference? You know, what's if if it gets that good where it can just imitate what people are doing? You know, do, do you want a book written by AI? Do you want to, do you want to sit there and read sort of a a autobiography or a biography written by by chat gpt because that's sort of where it could go in the long mm. run. i think that's where it's going a lot i, I see yeah. a lot of facebook ads at the moment with with some lady on it promoting a course that she's doing because i get a mm. lot of course ads and she's saying how she sells thousands of books on amazon and she doesn't write any of them yeah it's like that's not good no that's well it's not writing books that's um getting a, that's and if you think it's only using information that's already there as well so mm. it's not really, it's not really any sort of original research or writing. It's just it's not creative. It's, a, it's not creative. It's a, a a reproduction of of text that's already online, often without really understanding the content, mm. well, uh, that, the context. That, that's one of the worries that people in our industry say is that mm. AI is going to get rid of jobs. Content writers are going to be replaced by ChatGPT. Yeah, which, it, well, I I don't know. I think what you what's What's, what I have noticed, actually, is uh, I keep thinking it's going to get better, it's going to get better. But in the time I've using it, I wouldn't really say it has got better in that time. Mm. It seems very similar over the last six months or so. Um, and I think it's, it's always kind of... I think it's always going to rely on some sort of human input and over intervention to just make sure it makes sense and that it's... And I think it will kind of struggle to sort of catch up with the present if that makes sense i believe it's still quite common to see things that are quite out of date on it there was somebody this isn't chat gpt this is um google's um bard it wasn't bard it's got us it's it's um it's got something called search generative experience oh the generative ai yeah, thing that it's that's kind of just a search engine but it's uh, ai integrated and she's even scarier yeah yeah, somebody using that said that it it still seemed to think um, Trump was president of US. Well, Trump um, thinks he is. Well, <laughs> maybe that's what it. So, was. and maybe maybe it's looking ahead because he might be in a couple of years' time again. Oh, let's hope no. not. No. <laughs> so maybe it knows something we don't. Who knows? Mm. Um, so yeah, but I think it's 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 only reliant on what's already on the internet. So it's um, at the moment, at least, it's it's not really good enough for. Um, to replace the content writers, but yeah, it, it is learning and it will probably get better. So that's something you've got you've got to you've got to take into so, account. So what what about people that are actually using it to replace content writers? People that are mm. just getting blogs off ChatGPT and pasting them straight onto their website. What what's your view on that? Because in in effect, yeah. that's replacing work that we would do and replacing work the content writers would do. How good is that in terms of quality, and can it be relied upon? Well, it's good. In in it's. What what what's what you'll notice with ChatGPT is it it's always grammatically correct and makes sense, but that doesn't mean it's good. It's um, you look through it, you won't see typos, you won't see um, sort of just you know things that don't sentences that don't really make sense. It all kind of makes sense, um, but what it doesn't have, it doesn't. Although it's correct grammar, it doesn't mean it's good writing. It's um, some of it is. Um, quite grammatically kind of vague like it will use a lot of um words like some people say this happened or it is believed that this happened sort of passive structures yeah. which don't really i think it can you can now ask it to 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 show sources which um which it will do but it will still not always extract from those sources very well um other thing other problem i mean it can the people who make it admit it can they they use the term hallucinate they say it can do which hallucinate means they use the term it can hallucinate which means basically means it can make stuff up okay um, sometimes it it will just so that they admit that then they admit, they admit that, that yeah they admit that it just um, makes open sure ai have admitted that the, the term they use was hallucinate yeah <laughs> which means it doesn't it doesn't really um it loses kind of track of the the um 
context of the discussion. I've noticed if you do a, if you do sort of a, um, a succession of queries, if you say something, do this, do this, do that, it sometimes gets a bit confused along the way and pulls something you've asked for earlier on back into it, even though it's got no real context, to, no real sort of uh, relevance to, to your latest query. So it sometimes gets kind of in a, a bit of a cycle of um, of what you've done mm -hmm. before. And, I mean, it, it's good that it's remembering the context of what you've done before, but it sometimes can't get over it and brings yeah, it, it back in again and again and again. Just loses the thread of what you're actually yeah. asking it. Yeah. Right. So I'm, 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 see, I'm, I'm worried about people that are using chat GPT for their their content mm. um, because obviously it's AI it's as you say it's passive tone it's not being specific it's hallucinating <laughs> which means it's it's essentially making shit up yeah and it's grammatically perfect is that a problem for businesses that are using it um, it is because it's because you want to be authentic authentic you want to be sort of a if, whatever your industry is, you want to be sort of seen as a trustworthy and authentic source of, and, and sort of authority in that industry. So if you're using sort of wobbly text that doesn't really back anything up it's saying and can hallucinate and make stuff up, then yes, it is a problem in that way. Um, and another thing to think about is, is Google's stance on all this as well, which is a bit unclear itself um yeah we were we were i remember we were so chat gpc i think became open source i think it was around october or november last year and most of the last year there were still sort of rumblings of ai sort of content generation and that john muller guy who works for uh, google kept saying it's oh, it's no good it's against it's against, against, against our, google's policies, against policies. Yeah. policies yeah. anyone using it will be yeah. Um, and then I think when when ChatGPT came out, I think Google kind of took a step back and kind of went, actually, you know, this is actually quite good. Um, mm. So then, so that if you look at their latest um, guidelines, it says all it says basically is content that's unhelpful or that is created just to manipulate SEO rankings, mm. whether AI generated or not, is against um, Google's um, what do they call it? Uh, terms of um, terms of use or terms, terms of use yeah. so but then it adds a caveat to that saying that AI content has long been used to provide helpful content such as um, sports scores weather reports that kind of thing yeah so they're sort of sitting on the fence a bit and saying you know well as long as it's good we don't care whether it's AI written or not mm. um, and I think that's because they don't they're not confident in knowing whether or not whether or not they can determine whether writing is AI generated yeah um, so they don't want to say yes we don't like it or no we, we no we don't like it or yes we approve of it because if they say we don't like it and then somebody comes out and says I've written all these AI pages and they're all top of the rankings then it doesn't look good on Google's part so I think what they might do is they'll get better Google will get better at identifying it and then suddenly I can see some algorithm update called like probably named after a, some sort of bird they normally are <laughs> coming down and just hitting all these pages that have got AI content and them just say and Google identifying all this stuff is not helpful so that's mm. why I think you've got to kind of think maybe a step ahead with what you're doing that's that's a good point yeah it, it is yeah. important to think ahead because what works now isn't necessarily going to work tomorrow yeah and just because using AI content at the moment you get away with it doesn't mean next week, next month, or next year that you're going to get away with it. Yeah, exactly. And it's not, Google's not going to do it going mm. forward. It's going to do it on everything that exists and everything's going to get yeah. wiped out like that. That's how its updates work. Yeah, I mean, people the, get hit and they get hit hard. The simplest way to look at SEO, and I do tend to look at it quite simply, not having the, quite the, uh, the technical knowledge that some people here do, is if it's not good to read and it's not, it's in the same way that just, if you thought if you read it as a human and think is that not good to read then gradually search engines are going to work it out as well and you know it might take some time it's still i know there's a load of rubbish content that, that does rank well at the moment but long term it's it's always going to get better and the i can see google just working behind the scenes on this sort of ai detection and working out what other ai content producers are doing and just suddenly I believe they've got this thing already called Spambot, which is kind of based around that. 
uh, but just suddenly hitting all these sites very hard that have just created... Oh, I should have turned my phone off, shouldn't I? That's what you didn't tell me to do no, before No, you need this. to turn your phone off before you do it. Always uh, turn your phone off. Okay. That's AI telling John that is. what to do. You did give me a, a list of things not to do before this, but you didn't say turn your phone off. You didn't do that kind of... Um, I, I didn't, no. That, 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 should, that. Should, have, should have been obvious, that one. But it's not. It's no. not. So, yeah, no procedures. Okay. So that, that, that's a lot of the dangers of, of using AI. Obviously, you know, in the future, it can cripple your website if you use it wrong and Google turns around and decides, yep, yeah, I don't like it. But what actual is a good use of it at the moment? Um, I think just things like sort of getting over a blank page is a good use. So, so, you know, as a writer, people talk a lot about writer's block and getting started, that kind of thing. If you've got to write something and you really don't know sort of um, where to start with it or you've got to come up with ideas for something, um, that's what that's something I've used it for. When we first get clients here, um, we and we the content clients where we're, we're coming up with a content brief for them, we just come up with ideas for what we can write about. Not titles at first, but just subjects. So say... So you do, I don't know, um, I think the example I used in the video did recently was a florist. So you think, what would a florist blog about? So they might blog about flowers that are in season, what flowers mean, uh, what you know, the significance of different flowers, um, that kind of thing. So you could just ask it, uh, can you give me a list of sort of blog topic ideas for this, this industry? Yeah. And it will come up with some. Um, sometimes that needs a bit of fine tuning. So I, I tend to find when I do that, it always, it always takes me two or three goes to really get what I want because at first it will just come up with titles, even though I ask it not to. Yeah. Um, so that again, it doesn't always fully understand you. Doesn't query. understand what you're asking. Yeah. No, exactly. You have to kind of go, no, that's not right. I wanted this instead, and then it apologises to you, which is quite uh, quite, isn't quite it? quaint. Very you know? polite. Yeah. Um, Are you polite is, back to it? Do you say that's okay? I try. I do, I do try not to be rude to it. Yeah. I've seen people yeah. do that. It's yeah. quite common. People do I know, that. Just, well, that's you know, okay. Chat GPT, don't worry about if it. If you want to, if you're worried about self awareness and that, you want to, you want to treat you, yeah, you want yeah. to be polite to the robot. Polite to it, don't you? Because you Before know it's not going to forget, is it? No, it's no, it's not. You're no, it's going to know exactly who yeah. you are and what you've asked yeah. it. <laughs> so yeah, that is something to bear in mind. But and yeah, it takes a few goes, and then you've always got to, you've still got to go back and check it because it will come up with stuff like I think I did it for one client, and it said one suggestion it had was how to shop around and get the cheapest version of this, and you think well. Most companies aren't going to want that their blog. They're going to want, you know, no, no, use us. no not, not unless your business is a comparison site or something. That's true, yeah. But, yeah, but yeah, if you're a florist, you're not going to want to be suggesting yeah. to your customers shop around, Getting see if cheap. there's anything cheaper or better elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. Getting cheaper at home and bar. Here's a list of our competitors you could use. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's sort of a good idea. Just just to get over, just to get some ideas. Sort of a, um, you know, just brainstorming, getting ideas together, that kind of thing. Um, I've I've seen the idea of being used for keyword research, just mm. again, just for ideas. Um, you know, if you say what keywords might this company rank for, and I've I've asked it to give up to two hundred for that, just to see how it gets on, and it does it does do it, and you know, they make sense. But again, you've got to see whether anyone's actually searching for them, and you know whether they're anything you want to rank for. But it might come up with ideas that are something you haven't thought of, um, so that's not a bad idea. Um, and I think that's kind of, I think that's its limitations at the moment, is just ideas, sort of writer's block. I know some um, musicians have said they've used it for writer's block, or they've said it has the potential to be used for, to, if you just can't think of a line that rhymes or something like that. Just the guy from the Pet Shop Boys said this. He said... Neil Tennant? Neil Tennant from the Pet Shop Boys said he thinks it's got potential if you just can't, <laughs> can't think how to finish a line or how to rhyme with a line... Like one line with another, that kind of thing. So he said that, and um, yeah, I mean that's it. It's 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 for ideas. Well, theirs is a very sort of synthy pop, isn't it? So I imagine it makes I sense. I've never thought um, Pet Shop Boys. I don't think are known for their lyrics, really. No, they? they're more known for just their their aesthetics and sound. So I can't imagine yeah. Liam Gallagher being down with it, though. No, although his <laughs> lyrics aren't are often not brilliant either. Well, God, it was Noel who wrote most of the lyrics, wasn't it? Um, I don't think Chat GPT would have come up with someday you will find me in a champagne supernova in the sky, that kind of thing. I mean, I think it's... Uh, although if you asked it to write lyrics in the style of Noel Gallagher, it would be interesting to see what it came up with. It was an um, experiment. Yeah, but some like, I think kind of real storyteller musicians like Nick Cave is one 
He's mm. he's very against it. He thinks it, that somebody tried to write lyrics in his style, and he said they were they were monstrous. I can't remember the words he used. An abomination. An abomination. Like some, yeah. Some words like that. And I think Sting has had a big pop at it as well. Said he thinks it's oh, so that's the thing. It, it'll be soulless, wasn't it? It's just copying yeah. a style, but it doesn't know why. Yeah. The person does it in that way. But I mean, uh, to me, a lot of music now sounds very vacuous and basic. <laughs> so I'd, I don't know if it would be any worse than kind of what's what's in the what's at least right. in the charts. To be honest, who, who had about nineteen minutes before John started talking about how music <laughs> today is not as good as not it used all, to be? No, 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 not all music. Just chart, just, just chart, chart music, music I mean, radio yeah. music, pop that kind of music, thing. that pop, pop popular music, music popular yes, music. Popular, hate that popular music. Popular music. Well, it's, it's not going to be long when ChatGPT is going to be writing all the pop music. It could do. It could at least write the lyrics. It may um, well have written some already. Might well. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Somebody mm. could come out one day and say, yeah, this song that was number one for 10 weeks, I didn't even write it. Chat, Chat GPT. GPT wrote it. And then who gets the royalties? Do Well, um, that's another question. Yeah. Do OpenAI get it or does it's, it... Or how did it source those lyrics in the first place? You know, it must have used something to, to put those lyrics together. So, yeah. It's, yeah. It's who gets the credit? Who gets the blame? Who knows? Yeah. So where where do you uh, just to wrap up then? Where do you see it going in the future? It, um, not in the bin. I think it needs it needs to be regulated somehow. We need to think about why we're doing it. Um, what what's what's the beneficial use of this? Who should be using it? And you know what's you know how are we? Um, thinking the one what what's I mean so how what's what's the end goal of how we're using it is it is mm. it making a better world or is it just making more nonsense more confusion and more misinformation and does it have a sort of sinister undertone and in that way you might have to look at who is actually able to use it I think the version you mean of thinking of limiting it I don't know. if it gets better yes at the moment I just think it's quite gimmicky and quite you know sort of mm. just sort of a bit of fun in a way um but it's because it's because it's often just so easy to work out at the moment if something has been um, like AI generated. Because well, we get so many applications to be content writers here, and I, when I look at them, I, I've just got to the point now where I can just open them and go, "Yeah, that's that's ChatGPT." Because there's there's just a certain structure. All the paragraphs are the same length. Hmm. They have this sort of passive voice all the way through. They have this quite poor closing paragraph that normally ends with overall or in conclusion or something like that. Yeah. It's just isn't really a way you actually write an essay. It's kind of just... So, so anyone that thinks that they can use ChatGPT and not have people know <laughs> that it was AI, yeah, I they're think fooling if, themselves. If you're writing an assignment, if you're trying to be a copywriter or something, you do that. I think any, anyone who works in that industry has, has been bombarded with so much of this rubbish that they, I think they, they're mm. just on... They'll, they'll, They'll just be in it in literally seconds. Mm. Um, and if you can tell it, then Google's not going to have too much trouble identifying. That's true, it. yeah. But I, I can only tell that particular that particular task that we set. Really. But, but Google will have a lot more frame Google of reference. Will have a lot more frame of it reference. It will know yeah. exactly yeah. what it is, and it will know that's AI. That's yeah. not. Yeah. You and if it wants so, to yeah. filter it out, it will. Yeah. And it will do eventually. It will want to claim mm. that it's this sort of clever um, search engine that you know recognizes authoritative sources rather than computer generated writing so it will mm. i'd imagine it will at some point have this big unveiling of, a, of an algorithm oh, you, can, you can see it now can't you yeah. it's going to be the ai update and yeah, it's going to yeah, happen yeah. overnight and we're all going and to be well we're not we're going to be fine we'll What's, be fine everybody well, else yeah, is going to be screwed yeah which is going to be great for us <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Quite frankly. Is, so yeah. brilliant for us i'm looking forward to it google make it happen quickly what do you think it'd be called what animal do you think they'll name it <laughs> Should we, we, we predict the animal? Going to predict the animal. Well, Google doesn't name it. It's the SEO community names it. Oh, is that right? Yeah, even yeah. The, Google, even Google, the really old ones like Penguin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they're, they're all named. Uh, there's stories behind each one. I forget what they are, but yeah, mm. Google doesn't name them themselves. I think it'll be Hawk. Hawk. Hawk algorithm. That's the Hawk algorithm. The Hawk. Sort of, you know, it sort of sweeps down and takes out all the. Uh, it's like. Like you know, it takes out all the dead meat. Like that's all what the dead do. meat. Or is that is that vultures? <laughs> that's oh, vultures. Like, yeah. Okay. The I'm vulture. Sure the vulture that. algorithm. That's mm. not. That's that's a bit negative, isn't it? A hawk's better. A hawk's more majestic. <laughs> majestic. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to look out for the hawk <laughs> algorithm from Google, which is going to wipe out all AI content, all websites all using AI, no, all all unhelpful AI, all content. unhelpful, which is most of it. 
It's, yeah. Well, like I said, the examples they give, the sort of sports scores, weather reports, it's quite... Yeah. It's not creative writing, is it? It's just sports it's re- score reporting is just... on fact. Liverpool yeah. have gone ahead, and weather report is just... Yeah. Uh, it's sunny, it's going to be cloudy later, that kind of thing. Liverpool so you're have not looking ahead. for creative or... Chester have conceded an equaliser in the last minute, that sort of thing. That didn't happen very often last year. The year before, I'll give you, but last year, I think, you know... FA Cup? Yeah, we yeah. were playing a higher division team. <laughs> yeah, 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 you nearly had a tie against Wrexham. But we won't go off into okay. that, because I know much you love Ryan Reynolds and Wrexham. Yeah, I can put this down, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, I, th- I think that sort of—I think that sort of ra- I've wrapped it up there. I think we, well, we've ruined okay. it there, haven't we? We ruined it there. So the, the end takeaways then is that um, AI should not be used to generate content for your website unaided. Just filter everything that you've got, yeah. check it everything. It's it's fine for coming up with ideas. It's fine for coming mm-hmm. up with concepts. It's fine for coming up with you know getting over blank page syndrome mm-hmm. and generating researching keywords, for example, for for content. But do not try and pass it off as as your own work. As your own work, so, yeah. because you can tell. Yeah. I Other can, people will tell. I can tell. No, I've seen enough of it. Google can tell. You're fooling nobody. Yeah. Quite frankly, you're fooling nobody. So don't think you're going to get away with it because you're not. Mm. And eventually, Google is going to at I think some so. point. I think so. I, I think I think it's inevitable. Yeah. Because otherwise, we're just going to have trillions and trillions of pages of AI shite on the internet. <laughs> Yeah, Google's got to filter it somehow, mm. and the way it's going to see- filter it is this is the crap AI gone. Don't they say the internet kind of doubles every year or something like that in terms of content and? But pages. you're responsible for a lot of that. <laughs> uh, I think I'd be interesting to see in the next couple of years whether that becomes you know exponentially well, it's, higher. It's bound. Well, we yeah. know from the writer applications, don't we? We're yeah. getting, was it five hundred percent, six hundred percent more oh, yeah, applications yeah. now as a result of people smartboard. thinking they can write content. Mm. Yeah, I mean, some of that's, I think we've done a bit of work on the site and it's a bit more attractive. So we are getting more good ones as well. Among yeah. That. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, we're getting, uh, and there's a lot of uh, chaff among the wheat. There's a lot of chaff among the wheat. Yeah. But the chaff is very easy to spot. Um, uh, yes, I think so. Very easy to spot. Yeah. Okay. So I think that, that, that counts it. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.